wonderful accent. And so the woman says, you'll get dinner ready for four because the Levines are coming. I'm going up to prepare my toilet, to shower, to powder, whatever I have to do. When I come down, I'll expect four for dinner, us and the Levines. She comes down at eight o'clock. She's in shock. The table is set for eight. She says, you're a bottler. You're a schmuck. You're not a bottler. You're an idiot. I said, for four, how come for eight? He said, madam, while you were upstairs in the shower, the Levines called and said they're bringing the bagels and the biollis. <laughs> reminds me of my favorite Myron story. It's an old joke, but the delivery is, the punchline is so adorable. It's at a fair. It's at a carnival in Coney Island. They used to have carnivals. When I was a kid, we'd walk Luna Park and Steeplechase in the winter. Our biggest fun living in Brighton Beach was going in the winter to the closed amusement parks and walking around and running on the rides and Steeplechase. And, and, you know, as kids, we'd always look for half-eaten hot dogs. You know, you go in those movie theaters where they showed the Nickelodeon, there'd be a half of a, a pound cake left over. As kids, you'd scavenge around, but, but in the carnivals, there were always a challenge. There was always a guy hammering a hammer or hitting a, or cutting a tree trunk. And there was a guy who chopping tree trunks, big tree trunks, and he challenged anyone in the audience to come up, and he'd give $1,000 to anyone that could chop the tree trunk faster than him. And a thousand dollars, and this guy was a real Paul Bunyan strong man. All of a sudden, a little Jew comes up, says, "Give me the thousand dollars, give me the axe, and get the hell out of the way." <coughs> sure, Myron Cohn. And then Paul laughed at the little Jew. What is that? Just give me the axe and give me the goddamn thousand dollars, and that's it. Walk away. Well, the crowd laughed, so they gave the little Jew the axe, and he took the axe, and in two minutes, the trunk was sawdust. And they said, my damn little Jew, where the hell did you learn to chop wood like that? He says, in the Sahara forest. <laughs> you mean Sahara Desert? Sure. Now, now. <laughs> I love that punchline. Now. Just heard this one. I don't know if you heard it. The, a guy in Russia saves up enough money, you know, with the starvation and the hunger going on there now in this wonderful new government by Yeltsin, I don't know about him at all, I never Yeltsin, uh, but everybody's starving, and this guy saves up a lot of money and he wants a car. So he goes to a dealer and says, I got four million rubles I save up, I want the car, automobile, all my life I dream. And the guy says, all right, you got the car, but it will be delivered in 10 years. He says, 10 years, and I want the car now, I got money, here's rubles. No, 10 years, you wait 10 years. I don't want to wait for 10 years, I got money now, give me car now. You wait 10 years. He says, all right, 10 years will be delivered in the morning or the afternoon? He says, in the afternoon, good. In the morning, the plumber's coming. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing, for Brooklynites, where we see a lot of Brooklyn nowadays, this is my last segue, <laughs> is in Florida. We work a circuit called the condo circuit. That's the death circuit. Because Florida, as my wife, Roxanne, is here, the only member of my family that's here. My sons are not lawyers or judges. My son graduated UCLA and is now one of California's great waiters. <laughs> graduated summer cum lousy with four degrees on the dean's list, is now a waiter at a restaurant called Off Vine. He is Actor, producer, slash waiter. <laughs> Waiting for Mazursky to walk in and say, nice young man, I'm going to put you in. My name is Ted Alice, Sarah, and Jean. Anyhow, I forgot what I was going to talk about. I'm really gone. It's really senility time. Going back the other way. Where were Oh, Miami. Anyhow, we work the condominium circuit. All of us work it because that's all that's left. It's getting so bad now, Milton's working it. No, you will be, though. It's wonderful. These condominiums are tremendous. They're tremendous places, and, and it's not only Miami. No more there. It's now Palm Beach. It's Fort Lauderdale. It's Tampa. It's Orlando. And who do you think is there? All these Jewish people and New Yorkers and Philadelphians and Chicagoans that used to come and see us at the Chez Paris at the Copacabana, the Latin Quarter, and they have nowhere to go except the condominiums they live in. Each one of them has a tremendous theater. I know you've heard of these century villages. These are Jewish infantry camps. It's God's waiting room. Not, these people wander around trying to find out where they live each night. 
Little couples walk in my luggage to see the show like this, then they walk out. Whether they saw the show or not, they don't care. They keep moving so they don't die while sitting in the condominium. There's millions of them, and the worst thing in the world is I like to circle in the audience before I go on. I like to say hello and mix, but it's a, it's a big mistake. It's like never go to your high school reunion because you'll meet dead people. People come up to you. They come up to me. Hello, Sal Nilman. I was in your English class, but, but you're older than I am. That's always their last name. You're older than I am. A couple of months ago, she said, I'm glad to see you held up as good as I did. A yachna with torn rumors with a hanging bee with a rubber band. Awful. Don't, don't, don't ever go to a high school reunion. Oh. And, me, and as soon as that happens, you pop up right away. You go, I'm young. I don't know you. Who are you? Where, where are you from? I never went there. I never had. But one of my favorite stories I do down there is the old women condominiums and they're all over the world because women outlive men we all know that because they're not married to women they always <laughs> all the women living alone old bubbas old yachtish and the, and the phone rings four o'clock in the morning it's a shocking thing when an old woman lives alone four in the morning hello who, who, who is it hello you know, like a CEO Winston's head hello who, who is it hello four o'clock in the morning and she hears over the phone, ah, ah, it's me. Oh, you're gorgeous, you old bubba. Oh, I've been out here in the dark watching them tiskies. Oh, I know what you want. You want me, you want me to come out and do it to you. You want me to come in there. You, yeah, I know what you want. You want me to jump on your bones and play with your tiskies. I know what you want. She says, you can tell all this from 